You'd have to say it would take some courage to knock back one of the biggest music acts in the world from using your business, right? Well, that's exactly what today's guest did. And he doesn't regret it for one minute. Well, I said, welcome to a small business marketing show. Where successful small business owners share their souls. To take your marketing straight to the lead. Now, here's your host, Mr. Tim Bowie. And welcome back, listeners, to another episode of Australia's number one marketing show. I am your host, Timbo Reed, but you, so much more importantly, you're a motivated business owner and you are ready to crank out some great marketing to build that beautiful business of yours into the empire it deserves to be. Welcome. If it's your first time around, you have picked a ripper episode to join us on. If it's your hundredth time around, love your work. Thanks for coming back. Big show today, James Young. (laughs) I just have to say this guy's name and it puts a smile on my dial. He is the owner of Melbourne Rock and Roll Institution, The Cherry Bar. He is going to join us. He's another highly motivated business owner. And I tell you, he's living his dream. And he's got some great marketing insights that he shares along the way and some unbelievable stories. Rock and roll team, rock and roll. Hey, any idea who he knocked back? It's a big name, I promise. I'll share that with you very shortly. I also help a listener convince her bosses why they should embark on a helpful marketing strategy. Today's show made possible thanks to the good folk at Web Central who do stunning website design. You should check theirs out over at webcentral.com. It is quite a beautiful site and it just works. It does what it needs to. Simple and effective. We're also brought to you by Cornerstone Business Solutions, Aussie-owned, family-run, offshoring business over in the Philippines, helping time-poor business owners Get more done without spending a fortune. Hey, guess what? As per usual, there is marketing G-O-L-D dripping from the ceiling over here at Small Business Big Marketing's HQ. So let's get stuck right in. Support for this show comes from website experts, Web Central. If you've ever tried to get a website designed and developed, you'll know it can be a bit like pulling teeth. Verity Ma, Web Central's Chief Marketing Officer, agrees. It's actually very time consuming because it's not just building it and getting it live. If you want to run a successful online business, you have to also manage it, update it regularly with content, optimize it for SEO, probably run some advertising on either search or Facebook. And so that's not what really you want to spend your time doing in your business. You want to be focused on your customers and really converting those leads that you're getting from your website into true sales. Web Central, freeing you up to focus on getting that cash register ringing. If you need your website updated, or maybe you just need a website, visit webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo for some exclusive listener offers. All right, coming up, I share six ways to help a listener get her bosses to start thinking a little more smartly about their marketing. But first, let me introduce you to James Young, owner of the Cherry Bar. Now, how do I describe the Cherry Bar? This is really important because being audio only, you're not going to be able to see it. Although I did do a video tour with James and I walking through the Cherry Bar and showing you around. You can find that over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 316, and I encourage you to do it. If you can't do that, let me describe the Cherry Bar. It's a dive. (laughs) Yeah, I say that so lovingly, and James will support me on this. It's tiny. It holds 200 people, and it's an iconic live music venue in Melbourne, aptly located in the blue-stoned ACDC lane in Melbourne CBD. James actually got that lane renamed and he tells us how he did that. It used to be called a very unusual name, the opposite of ACDC. More on that later. Now, walking through the graffiti covered entrance, you enter a rectangular room with barred windows. Not sure whether that's to keep people in or out. You're half underground at this stage. And here's the thing, it stinks. <laughs> like seriously, it stinks. It's sort of a mix of stale beer, sweat, and cigarette smoke from days gone by. You with me so far? At the end of this dark and dingy room, with possibly the stickiest floor I've walked on since, no, actually, it's the stickiest floor I've ever walked on, there's a tiny stage with a red velvety curtain backdrop, okay? 
dingy. In the middle of the bar is the bar, and at the back of the room are the toilets, which I've got to tell you, you would lo- use as a last resort. I'm not painting a pretty picture. But here's the thing. Cherry Bar regularly attracts big-name stars and their crews after they've rocked out the local stadiums and arenas. And therein lies my fascination. How the hell has James done this? As I said, there's nothing fancy about the Cherry Bar. Nothing. Yet it punches way above its weight. So much so, James said thanks, but no thanks, to Lady Gaga. (laughs) Now, he explains why he did that shortly, but I started off by asking James, how would he hold the mic if he were a lead singer? It's interesting, isn't it, that... that, uh um, you know, I would book 1,100 different local acts a year, and Cherry Bar is probably the only bar in Australia that has live local music 365 nights a year. So I've seen tens of thousands of bands. I saw a new band called Amel and the Sniffers with this female lead singer, Amy. Amel and the Sniffers. Amel and the Sniffers. <laughs> and she had a mic technique I've just never, ever seen. And it's like she she was all about nonchalantly wrapping the cord around her. Yeah, um, right. Ra- wrapping it around her neck. And I was just thinking... So simple, but suddenly she's um, unbelievably intriguing. She, she was, she is going to be. They've only been around for two or three months, and I'm, I'm fully in, fully in love with that band. I love it. It's funny, James. I have uh, recently updated my iTunes artwork for this podcast, and it's me with the cable wrapped around my face, looking fairly Hannibal Lecter. I'm getting a bit of negative feedback. <laughs> so, uh, but I'm guessing someone like you, in terms of that, you just go, well, stuff it. You know, be yourself correct i think so i think you're looking for you know individuality there was a there's a band called eddie current suppression ring and the lead the lead singer um <laughs> just, just keep rolling out the band i don't care we don't have to talk business <laughs> but uh, and brendan did two one no mic stand two for some reason that was a bit of anxiety hmm. would wear a single golf club and he would um what do you mean wear a, sing- a golf glove a golf club sorry and he would and he would have the um microphone lead and the microphone it had to be 20 circles uh, you know, he must have wow. ADD. So a- ADD, OCD. And, yeah. He had the lot going. And, uh, he, he was a fantastic frontman, but he didn't like the attention on himself. And he he was the only frontman I've ever seen <laughs> who would push his microphone onto the guitar fretboard of the guitarist <laughs> when he was playing. Because don't look at me, look over here. <laughs> you know, he was fantastic. But I do think microphone technique is important. You know, as a, I used to love Michael Hutchins. Uh, yeah. I've, I've, probably a word that hasn't been mentioned the Cherry Bar because he's far too commercial or was far oh, too no. commercial. We love but, Michael uh, Hutchins. We, lo- we love uh, In Excess. In fact, um, I share his birthday, so I've got a lot oh, of time you? for Michael Hutchins. I love Michael Hutchins. Hey, um, James, you knocked back Lady Gaga. What, what happened there? Yeah, well, what happened was uh, Cherry were open seven nights a week. Um, we tend to make friends with the touring um, crews with big rock acts. And I love the crews because uh, they come in every night, they drink, they pay for their drinks, they're well behaved. Uh, and uh, believe it or not, they come back as opposed to the artists uh, on cycles probably four times a year because the same crew that did George Michael is doing Lady Gaga, is doing Black Sabbath, uh, is, do- is doing Iron Maiden. So you make friends with the, with the crew. And the crew had been here at, uh, for a couple of nights in a row, and I got a phone call uh, uh, saying, listen, um, Lady Gaga wants to do a July the 4th party um, tomorrow night, mm-hmm. uh, July the 4th, Wednesday night, at Cherry. Do you reckon that you can, you can fit us in? We, we reckon we want to set up a, 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 and have her play on, on the stage a bit or have a band play. And uh, immediately I'm thinking through all my past experiences, these things never happen. You know, the, the stars, you know, I, I, I never promote... When I hear that Kings of Leon are coming to Cherry... I never promote it, mm-hmm. um, not because I don't want people to, to know necessarily, but because uh, too many times I've been left holding the baby when they just get to the top of the top of the uh, ACDC lane, they yeah. see too many people, or for whatever reasons, they just don't come. Freak out. So my starting point, to be perfectly honest with you, uh, Tim, is I don't think Lady Gaga is coming, but here's my position anyway, fellas. <laughs> I like to respect existing um, band bookings, I always do. I've got a two-piece blues outfit from Mildura called Jackson Firebird playing this um, Wednesday night. I'm not going to bump them. If you do want to hold Lady Gaga's July the 4th party at Cherry Bar on Wednesday night, you'll have to have the stage cleared by 9 o'clock because Jackson Firebird got to be playing. You tell them. It's got to be at 9.30. And they said, that could work for us. Um, mm-hmm. We want it to be an early night. We reckon we could have the stage cleared by 9 o'clock. We think we'll go with you, James. We love the Cherry Bar. I said, no worries. They call back later on and say, listen, it's all a bit too hard, basket with the timing. We reckon we're going to go for the Northcote Social Club. Say, no worries. Go for it. Go with the Northcote Social Club. Uh, 
and and I and then I get a phone call that night or a text from a friend of mine um, uh, who's actually a producer of a of a of a breakfast radio show in Melbourne, uh, Sasha. And she says, "I hear Lady Gaga is at Cherry tonight." <laughs> and I said, "No, no, 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 no. She's actually at the Northcote Social Club. Um, mind you, I'll eat my hat if uh, if she turns up." Go to bed that night. Wake up in the morning at five a.m. I'm going to the bathroom, looking at looking at my phone as you do. Sasha sends me through a picture of oh, Lady Gaga, no. Lady Gaga at Northcote Social Club. I look at it and I go, "Damn, you idiot!" <laughs> do you agree? And, and then I'm and then I'm sitting there going, "What have I done?" Um, you know, at this particular point in time, mm-hmm. Lady Gaga is the biggest artist on earth. She's the number one um, most searched name on Google at that particular point in time. So I decided to try to, to put a clever marketing spin on it. I just put a small to medium-sized post on the Cherry Facebook saying, am I the world's biggest idiot or the world's most credible band booker? Mm-hmm. Lady Gaga wanted to play at Cherry. I said, no, we respect our existing bookings. That very small post got picked up by a friend of mine who wrote for The Age. She did a little thing online and then they went boom. And uh, to the point where I was doing interviews with... Um, Spanish television and uh, USA Today and and, uh, the story ran not only online but in the actual Daily Mirror in London under the headline, Barmy Bar Owner Says Nah to Gaga. (laughs) And uh, and if Lady Gaga had played that Wednesday night at Cherry, to be perfectly honest, I reckon I probably would have taken about an extra seven grand taking on that Wednesday night. That weekend, we had the biggest weekend ever in the history of Cherry Bar, and it took an additional $24,000. Well, it's not all about money, mm-hmm. but it's an interesting so, uh, side point. But then the story has, a, has an even funnier um, kick, kick in the tail, if you like. When three years later, Lady Gaga returns to Melbourne, <laughs> comes to this bar unannounced, doesn't choose to sit behind a velvet rope. She dances on that Cherry Bar top, which is a little dangerous, actually, mm-hmm. for the best part of... She's here for five and a half hours wearing nothing but practically uh, her lingerie. Mm. We didn't, I didn't say this at the time in the media because you don't want to get in trouble with, the, um, with liquor licensing for your, for your responsible service of alcohol. But she crawled out of the door at Cherry Bar on her hands and knees and crawled up ACDC Lane. When she turned up, she showed she was rock and roll. The first thing she said to my DJ, DJ Mermaid, was, I want you to play ACDC, play Squealer. Now, there is a very unusual choice of ACDC song. And then she kept requesting Motorhead and Judas Priest. And she had an absolute ball and she tagged herself, Instagrammed herself, that many pictures at Cherry. I think there's the two sides of that story there for, uh, firstly, keep them mean, keep them keen. (laughs) Correct. And also, she came back and she said, listen, James Young at the Cherry Bar, you thought you had the better better part of me by saying that I wasn't welcome at your bar. Well, I'm going to come back and leave a footprint on your bar that'll never be uh, mistaken. And and it was a literal as well as metaphorical (laughs) footprint (laughs) that she left. Did did she know that you knocked her back the first time? Definitely, because she was being toured by Live Nation. The vice president of Live Nation uh, is a friend of mine, Roger Field. Roger Field would call me or text me and go, can't believe I'm sitting here having yeah, dinner with love Lady it. Gaga and all they're doing is talking about you. Love it. And here's the other thing. You might have done You might have done an extra seven grand the weekend after you, you said no, 24 grand, you know, that following week or whatever you did. But the press coverage you got for saying no, would have I would have thought gone into the hundreds of thousands of dollars if you put, you know, column centimetres or, or seconds on it. Well, versus yeah, her yeah. coming here, you wouldn't have got a lot of coverage. It's kind of, mate, and we were very lucky. The reality is that Cherry Bar, you know, we... we we, we um, it's all smoke and mirrors. We punch bigger than we are. We're, we're, at the end of the Mate, day, we're, we're a late night rock and roll bar with a 200 person capacity, but we're a global brand. People, okay. people know about Cherry Bar in ACDC Lane, where, and where we're very, very lucky, Tim, and where we make, uh, where we manage to be almost bulletproof with our our success model is, we get good cra- crowds for the live bands early. And then we get double the size after the bands finish and we're licensed till 5 a.m. because all the bands in Melbourne know that the destination venue to go to after okay. you've finished so this, is this, Cherry Bar. This is what fascinates me, James. Mate, 49 year old bloke, every band you've mentioned, you're, well, you're 50. Yes. I mean, you sure. know the bands, <laughs> I don't know these bands. You punch way above your weight, right? How how have you created this energy? Because let me what I wanted to do at the start of this interview, and I'm just going to do it very briefly now. In fact, can you do it, and then I'll add to it. I need you to describe the venue. Um, I can do it in my way, or you can do it in yours. I'll start by saying 
it stinks. <laughs> it's, and it was a real pity when they changed the smoking laws because we never realised how bad we smelt. <laughs> yeah, right. And, uh, At least it could have been, you know, covered up by uh, nicotine. Well, I think I think it's very important, uh, no matter what business you have. Uh, one, you know, you, you know what you stand for. In, a, in that case, it's rock and roll, and you just got to be real. Yeah. You've got to be authentic. Yeah. So in every in every possible way. So yes, we've got sticky carpet, I sticky. Mean, and we're we're a, we're a dive bar, you know, and we're, we're lucky in that sense. It's a dark little bar. We've got lots of we're roof rafters. We're in a basement, roof rafters. Nothing's new. What would the newest thing here be? You? <laughs> Just about. <laughs> and, and, you know, we've had the council will say, can we please put frames down ACDC Lane because we want to put those uh, unattractive rock posters in right. frames. And I said, absolutely Can't no wait. way. That's, That's not rock and roll. We want to... We want to We've got one light in the street, and it, and it, it dangles out like a, a, a street lamp, and it flicks on and off. No one knows why. And they say, well, can we come in and fix the lighting and turn it into like 7-Eleven? It'll be safer for people underfoot. No way. We love the broken lamp yeah, yeah. that flickers above ACDC Lane. How are we going so far? What a character, hey? And i got to tell you, James is just warming up. Before James reveals his secret source... Here's a word from some rock stars that make this show possible. Support for this show comes from Cornerstone Business Solutions, an Aussie-owned, family-run outsourcing business based in the Philippines, who can reduce your running costs by up to 90%. I asked founder David Warren to share one killer tip that would ensure any business owner's journey into the world of outsourcing was a successful one. The secret is building a small team and you don't have to have a big team, you know, two people team to get started. And then once you've got a small team on the ground in a structured environment, so that small team helps in regards to HR, payroll, IT. Once you've got that small team on the ground and you learn how to make that team productive, Mm -hmm. then you've got an ability to scale wherever you want to go. Cornerstone Business Solutions, where teams mean business. You can book a chat with David today at cornerstonebusinesssolutions.com.au forward slash consultation. Get on Timbo's mailing list over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com. So I've just asked Jerry Buzz, James Young, how the hell he's created a business that attracts the like of the Eagles and Lady Gaga. I'm very glad, having been a former uh, marketer and owned an advertising agency, that I, um, you know, I saved my best marketing move for myself, yeah. which was being responsible beside my friend Paddy Donovan in changing the lane of corporation, changing the name of Corporation Lane to ACDC Lane. Once you've got the only business in ACDC Lane, and it's a late night rock and roll bar, your advertising uh, work is done for you. That that street sign is my weekly advertising campaign, really? and people and people from all over the, all over Melbourne, all over regional Victoria, all over Australia, and all over the world want to come to the rock and roll bar and want to play at the rock and roll bar that's in ACDC Lane. I do a music festival, have done for ten years in ACDC Lane, and uh, w- one of the hooks that managed to get get be- big international bands play for us is they want to they want to tour the world and play. Uh, God bless them, another corner hotel or another um, Mm -hmm. hi-fi bar. They want to play a memorable gig in ACDC Lane to a thousand people. It's like a denim group hug, and (laughs) and um, it's a it's a it's a it's a unique thing. It's it's all it it, it is um, genuine, and and there aren't that many bars that are open until. 5 a.m. that, oh, yeah, that are you, committed you, you, to rock and roll. You're giving me some literal stuff, and I buy the ACDC Lane thing every day of the week. Uh, genius move, but and you know your late night license playing live rock and roll. I get that, but there there's got to be something else. What, what is the X factor that the Cherry Bar has that no one else has? Well, it, 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 if it's if it's been created, it's a series of beautiful mistakes. The, the sound's fantastic in, in this venue, which which is important. Um, the, the the layout is fantastic. I believe, as the host of the bar, um, and I, I started off as the owner. I bought Cherry Bar as a vanity purchase because I wanted to get into my favourite rock and roll venue for the rest of my life. So, uh, but then I found out at the time I you know I um you know I've been a lawyer, I've been a journalist, I've run radio stations, I've I I, I had my own advertising agency. But eventually, it was it was looking me in the face. I, I I actually love booking bands, and I and I love rock and roll. So even though your parents, Tim, don't want 
every their child to grow up mm. to to be the booker of a late night rock and roll bar. They're very happy with me because they know I'm doing what I like. And life's too short not to enjoy what you do for a job. And, mm-hmm. and I love live music. And if I don't, it's unfortunate. Uh, bad news for my wife that I'm not into stamp collecting or um, or triathlons. <laughs> I happen to be obsessed with live music. And if I don't see live music a minimum of twice a week, I really? actually go a little bit stir crazy. Wow. I'm, I'm totally obsessed with it. I need it. It grounds me. And um, it, you know, I think health's about the mind, the body, and the spirit. Yep. The body. Uh, wavering, but the spirit and the mind, they're super athletes here. <laughs> yeah, mate, you're a machine. <laughs> Have a look at that. Body's a temple. Temple of doom. But it, when you come and watch live music, you say you watch it here twice a week or you go yeah, somewhere to watch it, live no, music, no, do you? I, I'll go to where the music is, but right. I will say my, my favourite live music is local Australian music. Um, it is my favourite type of music. And even though I love the Rolling Stones and I love ACDC and I've paid premium tickets to see those bands internationally. Oh, doesn't that uh, hurt? Um, and sometimes you're sitting, a, let's face it, you're a kilometre from the action. Mm. Um, you can come to Cherry Bar and our equivalent bars all over the world and if you choose to, you can rest your forehead on the fretboard of the <laughs> right. guitar. You can get you can get that close to it. And I, and I love the $5 gigs that you see here where, you know, guest musicians will jump on with a band that's where the, that's where the um, magic happens and and I go back to your, your question about what is the X factor mm-hmm. um, I, I think something that I learnt and it's important in business is is where you make your money and where you get your success is in that last 5% of effort that you make and if you're the owner of this venue and the booker of this venue technically speaking I don't need to be here I've done my work away from the venue I, 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 and I accidentally have the perfect skills to run a venue I thought it was all about um, hospitality turns out that 60% of the gig is administration so the fact that I used to be a lawyer and I know marketing that's great for relationships with the city of Melbourne with police with mm-hmm. council with bands with venue promoters um, all those things and, and and even though I was born in Sydney I've grown, grown up in Melbourne and I've got relationships and friendships with everyone all around and Network. the thing is that that people like the outspoken guy in the flamboyant suits and the cowboy hat who owns the venue and books the venue to be seen at the venue. You stand at the end of the bar and when the bands play, I go right down the front and I watch the bands. And those bands will play, of course, in every venue in Melbourne and, uh, and I hope they do play 50 gigs, e- gigs a week. But when they play at Cherry, they say, this is the special one. Hmm. This is the one where we pull out our best, uh, this is where we do our single launch. This is where we invite all our friends. This is the gig that we want to be a big one. And, and because uh, the venue has got a connection with them. We've looked after them. We've, um, I always I pay bands well. I look after them with the rider. I don't understand why every venue doesn't do it because you get your money back in, in, in you know, tenfold mm-hmm. because if you, if you look after the bands, they want to look, up, they want to look after you. And uh, I think, um, uh, you know, even though the bar's licensed until 5 a.m., <laughs> I've never been here at five o'clock because my wife's got the lo- <laughs> the ruthless two thirty curfew. Oh yeah, fair enough and too. I, 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 nothing fair good happens too. after two thirty apparently. I think, and and as you'll discover from this interview, I reckon after the first few hours we will have talked enough shit. You just don't need that bonus encore <laughs> session between two and five. You've covered the topics between nine p.m. and two a.m. It's done. You have a uh, you have a saying, James, which is "Don't say it, be it." And I wonder whether that's the X factor because there's a lot of businesses out there who say. They're going to do something, but don't necessarily – what they're actually doing doesn't match up. Would that yes. be fair to say? I think so. And um, you, know, you go back – I know you were being serious when you said that Cherry Bar stinks. <laughs> but if you come through the door, you would have said, I'm in a rock and roll venue. I oh, am, yeah. I am at a – this must, right. be, must be what CBGB's was like. We've got bars like. on the windows. We've got a red velvet curtain on a very small stage. Um, it's very hard to get your foot – like, just one moment. I'm just going to pull my foot <laughs> off the ground. Okay, I've moved my foot. It's Sticky funny about the, the bars at the window. I was standing at the end of that bar, and I think the, the bars on the window are there for security reasons, but, but – um, uh, don't, don't let people out. Or well, don't let people in. Yeah, I well, want well, to. Well, um, Happy Tom from Turbo Negro, a Norwegian band, came, oh, up, came, Turbo up to Negro. Me. He came up to me and he said something which I'll always forget. He said, James, I'm not very good with my Norwegian yeah. accent, but bear with me. He said, this is the greatest rock and roll bar in the world. And you know why you and all your Australians, you know why you love it so much? Because the bars on the window remind you where you came from. <laughs> he's Con- a, convicts. He's actually uh. saying that we are convicts <laughs> and we've got some... Mental blueprint right. where we feel comfortable <laughs> and at home behind bars. What do you say to businesses that aren't being who they say they are? 
How do they? How do they make the flick the switch? Yeah, well, I think I think I think it's as simple as um, you'd know this. It's ABC of marketing. You've got to have a point of difference. You've got to stand for something, and that's mm. so. And I I I didn't say it doesn't matter what you stand for. Just make sure you stand for something. And once you and that something so by true. the way is not an ingredient. It's not. We've no. got the best quality software or the best quality wheat. Um, it's actually a feeling, mm-hmm. uh, and uh, you know I think Coca Cola say that, that they're not a they're, they never promote themselves as a sweet tasting no. soft drink. It's it's about an emotion. So emotion. you choose what emotional feeling you stand for, and, and in our case, it's rock and roll. And then you have that funnel at work, and you pour every single decision through that funnel. Is this rock and roll? Are we going to go with um, Sailor Jerry as our partner sponsor this year? We've got a better better offer from Moe Shandon. Mm-hmm. Well, the right choice is, is you're going to go with Sailor Jerry or you're going to go with Jägermeister because they, they fit the rock and roll brand. It, it, the staff you you, uh, you employ. Um, How do you the, decide whether a staff member is rock and roll? Is it just a feeling? That's pretty pretty easy. <laughs> they they tend they tend to look at yeah. um, and they're the ones who apply. Someone who's not rock and roll, you know, may feel uncomfortable here. But I, I think, mate, yeah, hello, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm much more spanned out ballet than I am rock and roll. Let me tell you. Was there any every new romantic band playing at the end of that stage? By any no, not, but my, my wife is begging me for, be, begging me to um to uh, to tour orchestral maneuvers in the oh, dark. Oh man, how good <laughs> would that be? Onion skin. <laughs> she's she's I've got and she's obsessed with the Human League. I actually love so am the I. Dare record. Is, is Mate, the- Molly Meldrum uh, said he said that is the next Beatles White Album when that came out. Mm-hmm. Great album, yes. And we, and here at Cherry, we'll be saying it's a Queens of the Stone Age Clockwork album. So there right, you go. yeah, don't know it, mate. But uh, <laughs> tell me, so yeah, I love I love that whole about being it. Uh, not enough businesses do it. Tell me about staff. What the staff say about you as a uh, as the boss? Well, well, who knows? But the the, the staff the staff here they're kind of a um, a family, and uh, you 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 know they don't. Let's face it, they're not getting paid um, sheep stations to to work at a, at, a, at a late night rock and roll bar. But I think uh, they connect to the to the family of people they work with. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I always say that I don't own Cherry Bar. They don't own Cherry Bar. No one owns Cherry Bar. It's 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 a collective if you, if you like. And I do like the fact you that share the spoils when you sell it. Yeah, pardon. <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> we're, we've been um, trading for sixteen years now, and we've never had an infringement notice from liquor licensing. We never have fights because we're lucky because of our size. Because I say we 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 um, with two hundred person capacity, you've got like minded people. It's the yeah, same right. tribe, and the sa- rock and roll tribe is not defined by gender or age or tattoos. They're just people who like live music, and they tend to look after one another. Once you get into a fifteen hundred person beer beer barn, you're going to see trouble because yeah. there'll be people from Diverse. different. From, yeah, yeah. And 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 I think the thing we we do things we do with our staff, the incentives are a bit unusual. So here's thirty tickets to see Black Sabbath. None of not all of you wanted to go, you couldn't afford a ticket. We're all going to see Black Black Sabbath, and we you know and we have our Christmas party. Which is a bit of a joke because normally it's in May, and uh, this year it's going to be in July. But it was supposed to be right, in December. Right. And you know, and you, and you um, take you all, uh, we take all the staff out to dinner, and then we'll go to someone else's uh, bar, and it'll be a, a lock in, no holds barred oh, party oh, till gee. till seven a.m. Yeah, yeah. Of course, I'll be gone by two thirty. God by two thirty. <laughs> um, tell us about that moment when you've actually been watching a band or sitting at the back here and just pinched yourself and gone I used to own an advertising agency and this is what I'm doing was there like a moment where you're talking well to I'm, I'm very very lucky because we've had a good series of those moments already this year For, uh, last week Sherry Curry from the Runaways I convinced her to do a side show at, at Cherry no the Cherry Bomb at Cherry Bar yeah. she's played here on, on, on a Monday um, I've had Richie Ramone from the Ramones one of the last you know one of the sadly the last member of, of, the, of the Ramones a drummer um play here and earlier this year i think the future of rock and roll is a band from long beach california called rival sons Mm -hmm. they uh toured the world on the on the end of world tour with black sabbath managed to convince them to um uh to perform a sideshow in melbourne which is unheard of Mm -hmm. and uh i thought it was the one of the most amazing live shows i've ever seen in my life they were playing on that stage they were you know when we soundproof this place, unfortunately, one of the uh, uh, consequences of that is we created a sauna. If you've got yeah, a, yeah, yeah, Because right. we incubate, we keep all the sound in and and all the smells and all the and and all the heat. So they were like 
they were just sweating, that, and the gig was absolutely incredible. And um, I, I think it was one of the most important live shows um, uh, in the history of Melbourne, and there it happened go. on that tiny stage. Wow. Tell me, you have this concert out the front once a year. What's it called? Cherry Cherry Rock Festival. Cherry Rock Festival. This ACDC lane closes down. Hundreds and hundreds of people out there. As I come down the lane, you have got apartment buildings, I don't know, 15, 20 stories high. How have you managed the residents? How are well, they going? I think um, live music venues being threatened by new residential developments is the biggest issue in music globally. Yep. And Cherry faced that challenge. Uh, we didn't have that building there Um you know, for the first 14 years of operation. Yeah, right. But when you see, see it coming, in every single business, every year there's going to be a challenge. It might be a challenge from at home. It could be a challenge from your staff. It's going to be challenges from the economy. Every single year, you just got to suck it up and, 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 and you know, jump that hurdle. And for us, um, you know, we, we had to deal with the fact that, that even though it's brutally unfair, overnight, after trading for 15 years without a noise complaint, the second someone moved into that apartment block, we were going to be at fault and we could be closed down that, that week. And long story short, we eventually said, we've got to suck it up and spend the $100,000 on the necessary soundproofing, um, you know, double glaze every window, double brick the entire back of the building, get these heavy doors and this, um, you know, insulated double entry door mm-hmm. at the front. And, um, and then, of course, my first rea- reaction is, well, who, can, who else can I get to pay for this? Mm-hmm. How can I get someone yeah. else to pay for this? So you go to the developers, you go to council, you try to find a white knight um, in terms of a sponsor. Um, I tried all those and eventually, um, you know, you turn to the, the people who will never let you down the poorest people, you turn to the public. So we ran a crowdfunding campaign and said, listen, I'm looking for, for you know, we're a successful business, love to get a third of the costs of this from you guys. And uh, that crowdfunding campaign, which we called um, the I Save Rock and Roll campaign, and they got their T-shirts and a certain amount of money, they got their, their plaque on the, on the side of ACDC Lane. And we broke an Australian record, the $53,000 six-week campaign, Closed in 23 hours. Did you do it one of those crowdfunding yeah, websites? Yeah, we did that. With, we and we did it uh, called through Pledge Music, yeah. and um, that was a huge surprise. And it, show, it shows the connection to the bar, and also how important that issue is that you can raise that money in less than 24 hours. And then the issue I had was, um, you know, people wanted to continue to give, and I said I cannot, in any good conscience, take another yeah, yeah, cent. Yeah. People were coming in the bar, leaving $100 on the bar, and said, "That's for you. I'm just leaving it here." I want my name. I want my door. My name on ACDC Lane. And when we put up the the lightning bolt shaped uh, memorial to the people who who donated their money, and it's interesting when you look on that that thing, you see names like James Rain, mm. which impresses me that he found out about it within twenty four hours. But they 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 put their money um, where their mouth is, and. I always say it's kind of a form of street art and street art lives as long as it deserves to live. Yep. So it gets spray painted over if it's not good enough. And interestingly, all the street artists of Melbourne haven't touched that. So they, they think it deserves to be there and it's being respected um, at the moment. But it was a fantastic e- example of, of the public getting behind um, Cherry Bar. And maybe that renovation I did on the handicapped toilets has, has created... Oh, uh, you got <laughs> over the top there. <laughs> hey? They're amazing. Has created hey, the connection. the best room in the house. But if you've kissed a girl in that room, you will always <laughs> love Cherry Bar for the rest of your life. She won't love you, you, but anyway, tell me um, marketing-wise, your website's okay. It does what it needs to. You, your Facebook though gets a lot of lot of interaction. It does, it does. I mean, I believe in in marketing. So we'll we'll spend. I'm one of the because of my age. I'm one of the ones who still believes in street press. So I'll still yeah, right. advertise in, in Beat Magazine. I, I use um, community radio, so I use P, PBS every week. I'll do a Facebook campaign. I'll use one of the better sort of up and coming um, pop cultural websites. I use Tone Deaf. Dot com that au so this is quite a reasonable spend mm-hmm. but you know when the bands play at, play at cherry and i use street i say to them we take four dollars from the door but unlike other venues we're really going to spend it mm-hmm. promoting your show even even through friendships um you know we find ourselves on outdoor digital billboards which is um uh, you know uh, you know quite surprising but yeah the facebook is really so do, do you uh, mean like contract like just mates you know who own those businesses so they yeah, give you a little bit of yeah okay yeah. and um yeah you know the only people that ever give you trouble at a bar tim are your mates yeah the ones who want who arrogantly yeah, right. want to get in yeah. they expect free drinks <laughs> free free tickets to go, full house not for me i know james <laughs> uh but facebook yeah facebook's important uh i think you know again uh you know batting above above, above our weight we're there with um with a 200 capacity venue that's got close to 50,000 likes and, and I believe has an international audience. Mm-hmm. I always see the comments. That's why I'm trying to grow our, our merch side of things because I think we can, we can, do, we, we can do well with our... Um, with our I've got the, the new T-shirt that's coming out. Um, 
I blame Cherry. I think it's got I think Love it's got it. some real potential. Yeah. Some real potential. <laughs> but my attitude towards the the, the, the Facebook site is eighty five percent of the time just try to be funny and amuse people. Ten percent of the time try to teach them something, try to be didactic, talk about issues facing mm-hmm. music or, or other aspects of society, and only five percent of the time talk about yourselves which is hard for me because that's yeah, my favorite yeah. topic but but i mean it is nothing more boring than a facebook site that just says this friday this saturday this and if, if i if i put up if i put up today and just said we've got a fantastic lineup on on um saturday night make sure you come down and see, see this band you get one or two one likes, or two likes one or two likes then you, you know you put up you put up a picture of um of jack nicholson and diane keaton with with a small version of, of puff diddy and you say <laughs> Little Diddy, the Jack and Diane, <laughs> bang! There's your th- there's 300 likes and growing. Boom, boom. Who would you love to play here that you haven't got yet? Well, and it's got to be someone we know. Don't yeah, give me, you know, like uh, Wayne Bruce in the high chairs. No, or no. Well, like well, that. Oh, even though, well, the band's kind of fractured, haven't they? But it, the reason why I started the Cherry Rock Music Festival was to try to convince ACDC to right. come and play in ACDC Lane. Has any of them stepped a foot in here? Pardon. Uh, We've had Phil Rudd, that the uh, excommunicated drummer, yeah, right. drummer has been Oops. down here. When the ba- when the band toured uh, the, the tour before last, and I did a huge history of ACDC art installation in street posters up and down the lane. There was a lot of pressure on ACDC to come down, but they weren't doing one interview in the whole country right. at the time they were here. They'd sold out three shows at Eddie Head Stadium, but we did see Malcolm and uh, Angus's mother. Their wives, their sisters, and their daughters all ca- all came down. I can just imagine Angus is just sitting there with Malcolm on the couch, going, "Jesus, we're getting some pressure from this James Young." But I just could not be stuffed. Send Mum, Mum, yeah, yeah. Mum. Oh, get down there, Mum, get down there on your frame. And you know they're and they're and they're pretty tight, the Scots. But I I couldn't I couldn't give the t shirt to the to Good the mums and sisters. They purchased cherry bar t shirts to to take to take back to the guys. So what, what so, about um, what about the Stones? Sounds like one yeah, of your favourite bands. Yeah, we'd love to have the Stones and and. Chuck Lavelle, who's been the music director of the Stones and the keyboard player for 35 years, uh, he's, he's already got in the um, Grammys uh, Hall of Fame. Um, an incredible um, musician from from um, from the south of the US, keyboard player. Uh, I convinced him to do his only sideshow of the whole world tour that the Stones did, and, mm-hmm. and he did it here at, here at Cherry Bar. And as much as he's fantastic, he was on the first Black Crows record. He was in the Allman Brothers. He's yeah, right. played with Eric Clapton. His, his resume is ridiculous. Yeah. And I wanted to have Chuck Lavelle play here, but the thinking was, Tim, it's the night off between Rod Laver and um, and uh, and the so and the fa- and the failed Hanging Rock show. Yep. But and I know that Keith Richards, Ron Wood, and Mick, they're all staying I- in the Park Hyatt. Oh, it's up it, the it's road. a couple of hundred meters away. Oh, you're killing Surely me! Surely they're laughing themselves, yeah. going, so- "Oh, someone's finally <laughs> know who you are, Chuck. <laughs> get out of the cherry bar. Hilarious." But surely. We can just get a little surprise. Well, Keith, Ron, Mick, if you're yeah. listening, get down here. There's no one here at the moment. You yeah, could, of little, you know, just us. Sit back. Hey, well done, Melbourne Institution. You must be proud. Uh, I am. You know, it's uh, it's just living the dream, great living man. Living the just dream. Living the dream. And and uh, while that dream's alive, until Keith Richards plays on that stage, until uh, Angus Young plays on that stage, I'll be here on a Friday and a Saturday night till exactly two thirty. Well, there you go, team. James Young of the Cherry Bar. What about that? Now, I do encourage you to go and check out this video tour that I did with James, starting at the top of ACDC Lane and finding our way into the bowels of the Cherry Bar over at smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 316. As a side note, I've spent the last 24 hours picking chewing gum off the arse of my jeans. (laughs) There must have been some where I sat as I interviewed James. Hey, coming up shortly, I give a listener the marketing ammo to tell her bosses where to go. Well, where to go with their marketing. But first, my top three attention grabbers, thanks to Web Central's simple and effective website solutions and Cornerstone Business Solutions, whose goal is to transform your business's profitability. Attention grabber number one from my chat with James. Don't say it, be it. Don't tell me you're funny, tell me a joke. Walk your freaking talk. Everything James does, down to the types of alcohol he serves, is done with the audience and his brand in mind. Don't say it, be it. Love that quote. Attention grabber number two. Have a word that drives everything you do in your business. James's word? Rock and roll, team. Well, that's three words, but 
He lives and breathes rock and roll. It's the filter that he puts everything through. I spoke to a business owner only yesterday whose business is all about caring. I won't say what they do. I won't reveal them. But his word is caring. Yet the whole caring thing wasn't coming across in any of his marketing. Once I explained this idea of having a word for your business, the penny dropped. And the writing of copy, the delivering of a caring customer experience became a whole lot easier. So find your business's word. Attention grabber number three, storytelling. I know, I know, I sound like a broken record. Stick with it though, it's important. How engaged were you by the stories James told? You're leaning in, right? You want to hear more. You're listening intently. So go and find the stories that back up the points that you want to make to your customers and start telling those beautiful stories. Hey, what grabbed your attention with that little chat? Head over to smallbusinessbigmarketing.com forward slash 316. Leave a comment. Listener question time. Love getting listener questions over at iTunes. Leany76 is who left this question. She also left a wonderful listener review. Five stars. Best business podcast for small business. Thanks, Lenny. She says, most informative, helpful, and enjoyable marketing podcast that I have come across. Keep up the great work, Timbo. Got a question for you. She uses one of those little smile emoticons. Never know which emoticon to use. Does that trouble you? There must be a word for trying to figure out what emoticon. Do you? I've got about four. They're my, kind of, my fallback emoticons. After that, I'm left kind of thinking, oh, should I send it? Anyway, I digress. I digress. Here's the question. I'm a senior employee in a service business. How do I help my bosses? Oh, bosses. She's got bosses. We just have a boss. Understand the concept of content marketing when they don't like giving away information. Oh, Lenny, it's a solid question. And it's a question I reckon I get asked every time I deliver my helpful marketing keynote or I talk about my book, The Boomerang Effect. Let me give you six things to give your bosses. Tell them where to go, Lenny. Number one, don't call it content marketing. All right? It's an overused word. There's no shortage of content out there, right? Call it helpful marketing. Then it's sort of emotional and what business doesn't want to be helpful? Number two, explain Jamie Oliver's approach, Lenny. So here's the thing, and I think I've talked about this before. With Jamie, you know, we watch his show on TV. But that doesn't make us a celebrity chef, yet he gives away all his gold in that show. We still want to go to his restaurant. We want to buy his DVDs. We want to buy his book. We want to buy his app with all the in-app purchases. We want to give him our money, right? So he does it brilliantly. That is the leading example. Number three, get them to read my book, Lenny, full of case studies around helpful marketing. Number four, start with a helpful marketing initiative that doesn't cost a fortune. Here's an idea. Identify the top five questions that you get asked by your clients and customers and prospects and create the most helpful answer to each of those questions using a variety of mediums, video, audio, the written word, images, infographics, mix it up and create those five bits of insanely helpful content. Here's a fifth idea, Lenny. Show them examples of similar businesses producing helpful content. If these businesses are in non-competitive locations, then maybe even give them a ring and ask how it's working for them. So then you've got examples of content and you've got results at the same time that you can share with these bosses of yours. And number six, explain the opportunity cost to them, Lenny, of what they're currently doing. So for example, they might be spending 10 grand on getting, I don't know, 2,000, 5,000 brochures designed and printed. Whereas three grand, that would be a reasonable price, could get you, say, five very helpful videos produced. In fact, possibly even less, okay? So there is opportunity cost to the unhelpful marketing they are doing. Hey, Lenny, I love your work, Lenny76. That makes you 14, hmm, I'm going to say you're 30, but that your age is irrelevant. Thanks for your question, though, Lenny. If you've got a marketing question or conundrum team, then I would encourage you to head over to iTunes, leave me a listener review, and ask your question there. I will answer it on an upcoming app. Time to say goodbye, team. I know. 
Another day, another dollar. Plenty of marketing gold coming your way in the weeks ahead, though. Next episode, join me as I have a chat with a fellow who's made a decent living from driving 46,000 kilometres around Australia with his beautiful family. Brilliant, brilliant story, and he's created a business from it. Hey, be sure to check out cornerstonebusinesssolutions.com.au if the idea of drastically reducing your running costs makes you go, hell yeah! And webcentral.com.au forward slash Timbo if you need a beautiful website designed or maybe your existing one redesigned. Until next week, I am Timbo Reid. Always have been, always will be. Thanks for listening to the Small Business Big Marketing Show. May your marketing be the best marketing. Bye for now.